Hello and welcome back to another episode of whatever it is that this is. Today we'll be talking about how to take audio from your computer, your laptop, whatever the hell is running Unreal and pump it inside Unreal. So if I actually hit play here, you'll sort of see what's happening there. We're going to get uh, different amounts of particles based on my voice, based on the volume that I speak with. If I speak with more, I'll get uh, bigger particles and they'll bounce out and do whatever. If I speak with less, I get smaller particles that still look really cool. And So if you're a musician and you want to generate uh, some cool visuals for your live show, maybe you want to slap some materials inside Unreal and make some really fantastic looking stuff. Maybe you want to drive Niagara systems, uh, output that to something else, get some animated people dancing with you based on cues. The really? components themselves are just this uh, blueprint that I made, which just has a component that I've written that I'll show you how we've written, and a Niagara system. The Niagara system itself really just spawns an amount of particles based on the particle amplitude that we're feeding in. Uh, it gives them a radius so that they, you know, when we're louder, it's they spawn, spawn, they spawn, they spawn further apart and uh, scale the color. So different particles will have a slightly different color. Um, as well as scale the alpha. The component that we'll be writing, uh, it has a selected audio device and you can see the devices that I have uh, plugged into my computer here and changing to any of these will change their particle behavior. It will allow it to react to whatever's there. I have an average buffer value, which is just the buffer value that's being read. And I don't want to read that necessarily at the sample level, but instead at, at an averaged buffer level, just so it's a little bit smoother, or maybe it's a little bit more obvious that we're reacting, but you could really tune this as you'd like. I have a number of channels, in my case it's stereo, but this could be mono, this could go up to whatever you'd like, depending on the device that you've plugged in. Buffer time, so uh, to, to send in how much we'd like to capture, and a sample rate with uh, a, quite a neat little trick I found using the get options property tag, uh, which allows me to kind of set this up so that it can only be the sample rates that I'd like, and I can't, for instance, click on this and type something different, it will just change out of that. I have the buffers before averaging. This is that we read 20 uh, buffers, or we take 20 buffers of a value above a certain threshold um, before we consider them sampled or consider them processed. And then we have an audio level threshold, and this is just to say if I set this at 2, uh, 0 0.02, and I started talking, I wouldn't actually get as much reactivity until it was a certain volume. And then once it's a certain volume, I get a lot more reactivity, which I think looks really great, and you could kind of tune this up to have different sources. So some, uh, the, some fireworks only go off when there's a certain level of volume there for your know, bass drops or whatever. Uh, notice I'm using the stereo mix of my computer just so I can actually play stuff through my computer. The capture component itself was written for microphones, so it may do some weird stuff. Um, I wouldn't say that I've really road tested this yet, uh, but I think once you clean out a few of the uh, a few of the things that happen at a lower level that you might not be used to for game audio specifically because it's buffer stuff instead of game stuff, uh, it's got some a lot of quite a lot of power in it. Now I'm not using anything in latency attenuation effects whatever. I'm not using the audio. The audio doesn't exist in the world. It's not playing through the game. Uh, it doesn't even it doesn't even exist in the game. So I'm not even dragging it into the editor. So we're really referencing just the device, and it's important to understand that it is just the device, and it's not something else going on. We don't need to look through anything else there. The capture component, uh, again, that's that's not going to have much going on, and the blueprint itself actually doesn't have much going on. The blueprint itself just has sending the Niagara variable and you don't need to use Niagara here you could use any material any effect you want spawn cubes do do cube stuff so let's jump into the plugin itself there's a few components uh, there's really just two components that we've written one being an actor uh, to house the component that's basically all it does More live audio capture which is just an actor that has it spawns in a capture component for itself and it uh, registers it if it isn't, and that's just so I can do some, um, some stuff for post-edit change, and it starts the capture for the, uh, for the one that you've selected, as well as updating the, the string that's displayed, the buffer value, but you could expand this to do 
I'm sure, quite a bit more and be sort of a distributor or whatever you want to do. Before you go and copy a bunch of this and then try and get it working, you will need to go into your build script and fill out this audio capture, audio mixer, audio capture core and audio voice. Now these, uh, these modules will house a lot of the functionality. So if you've added the plugin in Unreal, which is just the audio capture plugin, you will need to add these elements here uh, as opposed to what I find with a lot of people trying to use Audio Capture Core is they're going on, they're trying to say, where are all the Blueprint functionality? I can't uh, drag off here and hit start. Like it is a C++ class. It doesn't really have very much Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Blue, it doesn't really have very much Blueprint uh, functionality. The Capture component, this is where all the, you know, all the magic happens. We have a constructor here. I'll go through the header first. We have uh, a constructor and a destructor, when you're doing lower level audio stuff with uh, accessing memory and, and running streams and running threads, uh, you do generally need to clean up after yourself. Unreal will do a pretty good job of some of this, uh, but occasionally you're going to hit problems because you're accessing things at different times or whatever. Blueprint function here will allow me to get that average buffer value that we talked about a little bit earlier, and this selected audio device has that get options tag um, and this get audio devices because we have get options the get audio devices really can uh, present a drop down so it can take it can return an array of strings and it can go and get uh, we can set up uh, the audio capture device info and get the capture devices available from the audio capture awesome. here which is the audio capture class module uh, plugin from uh, Unreal itself. And they have a name, an ID, an input channels, preferred sample rate, and then their, their hardware version. So some of these might be software controlled, hardware controlled, not totally sure. But for each of the devices that is in the device infos, and this will be native to your PC or Mac or whatever the hell you're using, depending on some implementations, some platforms might need more work than others. That I am specifically doing this on PC because it works on PC. I'm not really sure on the state of this uh, for other devices. Essentially, we add these device names though and then return a string array. And because we are reading the get options, we will show this selected audio device as a dropdown of a set number of entries, which I think is really quite cool. We have a blueprint function for getting audio devices in case I wanted to open that up a bit later. We have this overridden virtual function, which is called whenever the device that we are reading from generates audio. And it's going to be where we'll pull the buffer, which is this float pointer here for our audio and the number of samples in that buffer uh, off the device. The set audio device by name is just another function that I've written here so that we can uh, get when given a name, set the selected audio device to be that name uh, because we know that it's valid because we've only allowed a few in the drop down um, and you aren't allowed to send it there otherwise. We go through the device infos and we get that capture device if it's available. And if it's available, then we're going to go through and check that the device name matches. And if it does match, we're going to check if it's registered, if it's registered and we have a world. And again, these things like uh, some of the editor stuff that happens, it can try and start streams and close streams and yeah, closing streams before you've run the editor is, is bad. Parameters, uh, I've actually set up the parameters so that we can override the sample rate and override the number of input and, and uh, I've override the input channels twice, there you go. Um, override the input channels, override the sample rate and that kind of thing. You don't have to do this, it's just dependent on you know scaling and elements like that. If you're reading this after 5.3, you might find that this function here has a big deprecated warning over it. Uh, you'll find a uh, big deprecated warning for open capture strings. So streams, sorry. So instead we use this open audio capture stream, which passes in the params, which is that device uh, params, which is going to be our hardware, our device settings, our sample rate and the encoding and a return function. So this is what's run if uh, we wanted to run something else every time we process it. We don't because we're gonna use the overridden function. And then the buffer size that we're gonna set aside. Vice here, we're gonna have the number of frames desired, uh, which I pull the number of frames from the seconds in the buffer and the sample rate. Uh, and that will give you the number of samples you need. Next part is this average buffer value and the number of channels, the seconds of the buffer, the sample rate. Uh, you'll notice the sample rate is actually not initialized here. Uh, we want people to s set a specific sample rate. So there are sort of a number of established sample rates. You know, you have 
11K or you have 44, 100 or 48K, 96K and that kind of thing. So you don't really want someone saying, oh, I want a sample rate of 53,000. Uh, that's, that's a little bit odd. What we do instead is we run a post edit change property and this is to say that whenever we are in the editor, you can see the editor flags here, whenever we're in the editor and we change something on this object, we're gonna get a property changed event, uh, which is to say, hey, something happened. And when we do that, we're going to say, hey, is the property that was changed the sample rate? Uh, and all we're doing there is saying, the member name of this capture component is this sample rate. The sample rate will need to be a U property. Uh, this won't work if you're not using U properties and U functions, in case you ever try and do something with post edit change property. Then we're gonna have a sample rate array. This is the options that they'll let us have. And then we'll let them flick through the index and pick a sample rate from there. The only other thing I have there is the uh, audio device. This is to say that whenever they change the drop down, I wanna make sure that we don't start the old one and then turn off the new one or whatever we wanted to do there. We have a buffer processed and we have this populate audio device drop down, which we've talked about. We have the transient, uh, which is to say it's not saved. It, it doesn't, this is gonna be run all the time and it, it will pull the available audio devices as well as the selected index and then the capture component itself. So these two functions here, these two functions here are what runs whenever we re receive a buffer of audio, which is this uh, on generate audio, we're going to call the samples received from the parent uh, and say, okay, let's grab the samples received from this generate audio function. And let's make sure that we have no we have an empty buffer, so we, we don't know the, what this volume is or anything. And we're gonna say, we haven't processed the buffer yet. That's to say that if we ended up getting a whole bunch of zeros forever and ever and ever, we probably don't need to be uh, running the buffer process and averaging all that stuff out. You could, it's probably gonna have some sad things happen to you about dividing by zero, but you know, it'll happen. The data that we're using here is between negative one and positive one. The amplitude of the wave being above and below zero, but never really above and below one or negative one. We'll need to check the value that comes out to map that against our buffer. Granted that amplitude away from zero, positive or negative, is amplitude, we're happy to use the absolute value of that instead of positive and negative because you'll end up with incredibly tiny values if you're gonna take away all the negative rarefaction of all of the compression of the waveform. From there, we're gonna add the average buffer value because we've said, hey, it's over the threshold. We're happy for that to be the case. The total buffer value divided by the samples received gets us our average and our buffer processed, we can say, yes, we have processed it now because we've received at least a sample that is worth being processed. So we've at least got not a buffer of zeros. From there, we're gonna say the buffer's been processed. When the buffer's been processed, we're gonna increment this count just to save that uh, averaging and then divide the averaging, average buffer value, the value that we've accrued so far by the buffers before averaging. And if we have completed you know, the number of uh, average buffers that we're expecting, then we can set them to zero and start again. Uh, big uh, thanks to Monkus Funkus for providing both the album art here. Check them out on Facebook and Spotify. I'll play this on the way out.